Good day everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this video, we're going to talk a bit about the Enterprise Resource Planning System Auditing. What is ERP and how does ERP differ with the other information systems? So basically, the major differences between an ERP and the other information system is the way that the data is being centralized. In an ERP, the data is basically being centralized in a single database. While in the other information systems, such as traditional information systems and the legacy information systems, the database is usually being uh, federated. Uh, for example, if you have a marketing information system, the database is uh, federated inside the marketing department. If you have the HR department, then the HR information system is also the database is uh, federated inside the HR department. You should have already discussed about the ERP system in the SIT and the AIS classes, so I'm not going to dwell inside it too detailed. But essentially, an ERP system is basically a system that integrates data and other functional information systems or legacy information system inside a corporations. And other than that, we have the ERP2, which basically integrates other than the data inside the company it also uh, and the information systems inside the company. It also integrates the third party that has uh, transactions with the company, such as the uh, customers and the suppliers. So in, in RP2, they integrated the customer relationship management module and the supply chain management module into one big ERP systems. If there's ERP2, then there's also ERP3. ERP3 is a concept which try to integrate other than the uh, supplier and customer it try to integrate external big data or social media data uh, or unstructured data that is external to the company itself uh, since it is unstructured in the big data or the social media data it tries to integrate it in the uh, company's internal business process for example uh, a company with the ERP3 would probably post uh, several alternative designs uh, for their product in their Facebook uh, page and then it asks the customer to like which product uh, should be produced then the most likable product will be uh, produced by the company so they try it to include the customers and maybe potential customers or even uh, not, uh, not the customer at all try to include them inside their uh, business process. Now, ERC system is usually built on a client-server model. This means that the ERP application is being installed on a server and the clients will be able to access the applications through the client computers. So the application is not uh, installed on the client computers. It is installed on a server. That's why it's also uh, centralized. The application itself is being centralized. Now, uh, in its uh, structure, there are two uh, models, the client-server model. The first one is the two-tier model, and the second one is the three-tier model. As you can see, the difference between two-tier and three-tier. In a two-tier, the application and the database is being installed and stored inside one server. But in the three-tier one, the application and the database is being separated into two servers. So that's why it's the two-tier or only two levels. And the second one is the three-tier where there are three levels. The client, the application server, and the database server. While the application inside an ERP system is usually uh, being separated into two types of application. The first one is called the OLTP or Online Transaction Processing and the second one is the OLAP or Online Analytical Processing. The Online Transaction uh, 
processing is usually uh, to support the daily ba daily basis transaction or operations inside the company while the online analytical processing as you can probably guess it is used for middle management to do some basic analytics uh, that is from the data gathered inside the ERP system we have previously discussed that an ERP actually has a centralized database system but in practice, the ERP usually has two types of databases. The first one is the operational database that captures all of the transactional data inside the ERP systems. And the second one is the warehousing system. The warehousing system is where you will be able to structureize the data, uh, standardize the data so that it can be used by all of the uh, information system resources inside the company through the ERP system. So in this example, if the ERP system uh, gathers a lot of data or transactional data, for, uh, then it will be uh, stored in the operational database first. And afterwards, it will be cleansed. The data will be structurized and then standardized before it is being stored inside the data warehousing system. It is also true when the other information systems, such as the legacy or functional information system, is uh, finished with the storage of transaction of data. Before it's being stored inside the data warehousing system, it will be structurized or standardized, or in this case, being cleansed, uh, and then it will be stored inside the uh, data warehousing system. So uh, the uh, transactional data from the ERP system and the transactional data from other information system will be cleansed first and then both will be stored inside the data warehousing system and can be accessed through the ERP system. Now let's look at the risks in implementation of the ERP system. The first is the conversion from the legacy system to the ERP system itself. If you have taken the analysis and design system class, you should understand that when you are trying to convert from the legacy system to a new system, there are four approaches. And in such cases, ERP system is a very complex system and it will affect the whole company. As, uh, and this means that uh, the ERP system is uh, impactful to the company. This means that if you are choosing the big bang uh, conversion system, uh, even though it's very easy to uh, convert, but the risk is very high. So it is not uh, advisable to use the big bang conversion uh, approach. Instead, you can use the other conversion approach and <clears throat> the one that is most advisable is the uh, phase uh, conversion approach. The risks that is involved in the implementation of the ERCP system is the, of course, uh, management change because when you are implementing an, a, com a very complex information system such as an ERP system this means that there will be a lot of changes in both the business process and also the culture of the organization or the people and changing people is very difficult compared to changing the application or even try to change the business process because we have to change the culture so the oppositions uh, due to the organization culture to the new information system such as ERP is very high. And the second one is uh, the uh, when you try to choose the ERP systems, both the application and the ERP vendors, you need to be very careful because um, uh, it might not fit to your current business process or current culture of your organization. That is why when you are trying to implement an ERP system, uh, business re process re-engineering approach is highly advisable rather than uh, when you try to use a project-based uh, conversion system. And uh, the last one is uh, usually uh, companies who try to implement an ERP system, they use uh, consultants. And if you choose the wrong consultant, then this means that it will lead to a potential uh, disaster. Uh, an example uh, that I will probably give to you as a case is where uh, there's a company or a drug company in the US that tried to implement the ERP system but ended up in a disastrous nightmare. 
The company is called the Fox Mayer Drugs Company. You can try to search it on the internet before I give you the case. Other than that, implementing ERP system is very costly. And such cases, management needs to have a lot of justification uh, in whether the ERP system's investment will produce the expected benefit or not. Now let's look at some of the implications for internal controls and the auditing process if the company is using an ERP system. The first one is the uh, transaction authorization. Now ERP system is usually installed based on separate modules and each module will be able to communicate. So data from one module can be transmitted to another module and uh, it's usually being converged inside the database afterwards. Now, since the mo modules, each modules can communicate, this means that uh, controls are needed to validate uh, transactions uh, before they are transmitted from one module to another module. And the uh, controls over this uh, validation of transaction is usually dependent on uh, program control rather than human control inside an ERP system. The second one is segregation of duties. Usually, when a company employed an ERP system, they try to eliminate the segregation of duties due to manual processes. Instead, since the, most of the process is being done automatically inside the ERP systems, they try to use a role-based uh, model or role-based system yeah, instead of segregation of duties. This figure shows the difference between the traditional access control where we can segregate all of the duties and the role-based access control in which uh, several employees can have the same roles, right? But the permission is being uh, granted by the database administrator, for example. So this means that the segregation of duties itself is being done through the system by assigning different roles to uh, maybe the same person or different uh, person. While in the traditional access control, as you can see there, each uh, user will have different controls or access controls. So they are being uh, segregated based on their duties. Some of the implications in implementing the ERP based role control is some uh, new risk will emerge. For example, uh, creation of unnecessary roles. For example, I'm a manager and I want to look at some of the details on an account. So I was given by the administrator a role as an accountant. Uh, even though I can look at the details of an account, but I can also uh, change and I can probably edit and do data manipulations to the same account. So this means that the unnecessary role will create new problem instead of uh, solving the problem that is currently faced by me as a manager. And the second one is the rule of least access. So this means that uh, whenever I'm given a new role, the previous role has not yet been deleted. So this means that I can still access my previous roles uh, instead of I access it based on a need to know basis. And the third risk is who is going to monitor the role creations and the permission granting for each role. So uh, the company will probably need to hire one more administrator uh, or even try to make a role-based governance so that they can uh, manage and control the role uh, rules. Another implications by using the ERP systems to internal control and auditing is the supervision. The employee empowered philosophy should enhance, not eliminate supervision. This means that even though the ERP system has a lot of automatic supervisions to a lot of transactions, uh, it actually will enhance the uh, employees performance rather than eliminate any other supervision. So this means that supervision is still needed to the employee even though we already have the ERP systems.
And next is the accounting records. Since transaction data is being uh, stored in the data warehousing system, so a rigid control over the data cleansing over all of the transactions that came especially from the legacy information system or functional information system that may lack control compared to the ERP systems. Uh, then uh, rigid control over the data cleansing before it's being stored inside the data warehousing system is very crucial. I think that's that what I can discuss in this video. We will discuss again in the class. And I'll be seeing you guys in the class. Good day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.